morning, church. A blessed Sunday to everyone. Before we sing songs of praises to our Lord, let's turn our Bible to Isaiah 40, verses 28 to 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Lord, thank you for your word today, Panginoon. Whatever we are facing right now, Panginoon, let us remember who you are in our lives. You are our everlasting Father, our everlasting comfort, and everlasting strength, Panginoon. Lord, thank you for we are able to worship you, Panginoon. Because you have already saved us, Panginoon. And Lord, we are yours, Panginoon. We will always remember, Panginoon, that we are under your wings, Panginoon. In Jesus' name, Amen. Stages bear tonight the 
There's no one else, just you and me. When the curtains close behind, there's no pretense. I'm on my knees. Ang magandang umaga po muli sa inyong lahat. Sa mapagpala umaga sa bawat isa. Salamat sa Panginoon at uh, tayo pong lahat muli ay uh, sama-sama mga pagpuri 
at uh, makabigay pa salamat sa mga ito para po sa ating Diyos. Ang aking pong dalangin na nawa po kayo lahat ay nasa mabuting kalagayan ng malusod na pangatawan at patuloy na pagkapala at pag-iingat ng Diyos ang uh, sa bawat isa. Bago po natin tuloy ang uh, ipadalangin ng ating uh, tithes and love offering, hayaan niyo po muna akong basahin ang aklat ng Leviticus chapter 27 verse 30. Ito po yung sa Ingles. A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. Amen. Puli po ang Panginoon. Tayo po lahat ay uh, manalangin. Hallelujah. Maraming salamat po, O Diyos, sa magang ito. Salamat, Panginoon, sa iyong kabutihan, sa iyong kadakilaan, sa buhay pa ng bahay sa amin, O God. At maraming salamat na minsan pa, Panginoon, kami ay uh, gakaroon ng bahagi sa pamagitan po ng aming kakaloob. Dalain ko po, O Diyos, patuloy po kami bigyan ng malinis sa puso, malinis sa kaisipan, at patuloy na sumunod, Panginoon, sa iyong mga salita, O God, sa pamagitan po ng uh, pagkakaloob na ito, O Diyos. And dalain ko po, patuloy yung pagpalain ng iyong mga anak, Panginoon, sa kalapang araw ng pamumuhay, O Diyos. I-bless mo po, O God, ang kalamat at ang kilig, ang kalamang anak buhay, O God. Magiging ka ng mga negosyo o Diyos ay patuloy palaguin. Lalagid, Panginoon, na kaming lahat ay patuloy na sumunod at maglikod sa iyo, O God. Talangin din po namin pa na ng mga ipagalto ay patuloy na magamit po para lamang sa iyong kapurihan at sa iyong kadakilahan. Tapos mo din po, O Diyos, ang iyong uh, mga anak na siyang patuloy na nga siwa ng mga pahalapi na iglesyang ito, O Diyos. Ang dalangin ko po, sa patapat na kalakasan, sa patakalusugan at katalinuhan, O Diyos, ang palamang sa kanila upang patuloy na panghawakan mo agad na mayroong katapatan ang mga kalawag na ito at magamit para sa iyong kapurihan. Ama, salamat sa umagang ito. Salamat sa pagkakataon na kami, O Diyos, ay muli magkakaroon ng bahagi sa iyong gawain sa pamagitan po ng kalawag. Matuntong pagpalain at gamitin at kabayan pa noon upang ang iyong pangalan lamang ay patuloy na mataas. Salamat po na maraming maraming sa umagang ito, O Diyos. Pinupuri ka po namin at pinakasalamatan sa iyo po ang pinakamataas na papurik sa pangalan ni Jesus na aming Diyos. Amen and Amen. Muli, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat, mga minamahal kong kapatid kay Kristo, sa inyong patuloy na pagbibigay ng palob, sa inyong patuloy na pag-ibig sa ating Diyos, na ba ay uh, sama-sama po tayong patuloy na magtiwala, manalangin at magpasalamat sa ating Diyos na buhay. Muli, Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat at patuloy po kayong pagpalain ng ating Diyos.
Good morning, church. It's so good to see you, all of you, today. I've come to you representing a lot of people today. Pastors, Word for the World, Makati, the Outreach, our international pastors, elders, leaders. You have seen a short tribute to Pastor Jason Fernando, who has gone home to be with the Lord. And we, we wanted just to say to the body as a whole, this man has blessed us beyond words. He ministered un, un, unfailingly, faithfully, prepared himself, presented himself, and he will be missed among us. And we pay tribute to him today. We ask for special prayers for his dear wife, Eileen, and the three sons. The days that are ahead, they will need our prayers. Pastor Jason left us very unexpectedly. COVID is that way, it slips in and takes various ones from us. And we have suffered loss of several in the church over the past few weeks and months. Brother Jason reminded me his leaving of something that happened way back in the Old Testament in the book of Genesis chapter five that talks about a man named Enoch. And there are three or four things that are said about him that simply reminded me somewhat of Pastor Jason. It says that, that Enoch walked with God. Well, Jason did. We know daily he walked with the Lord. It also says concerning him that he was a righteous man in right standing with God. And it... it, it also says that uh, one day that the Lord just took him. It says that he was no longer there because the Lord took him. And it appears uh, Enoch, as maybe Jason did, was walking one day and just continued walking until he found himself in the house of his father where he is now. He will be there when we all arrive. And we're thankful for the Lord giving us Jason to minister among us. And we pay tribute to him today. And we will continue the ministries that he was so much involved in. He would certainly want us to continue doing what the Lord has called us all to do as pastors, as elders, ministry head, leaders. Brother Jason certainly would want us to carry on, and we are going to, to carry on taking the word to the world. 
Again, please remember this precious family in your prayers. And let us have a word of prayer now. Father, we thank you for the life of Pastor Jason and his time with us. Thankful that you gave him to us. He was a gift from you. And now you have called him home to be with you. His ministry here finished and we are thankful for the time. Now bless this precious family, Lord. I lead the, the sons, this family, and the larger family members who will miss him. Comfort them by your Holy Spirit. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Brothers and sisters, welcome to our Sunday morning 8 o'clock worship service. I hope that all of you are doing well in your homes right now. You are safe and that all of you are healthy. You know, I really pray that all of you watching right now are healthy and in good hands, that you are safe. 
you know, probably um, you've heard about this very sad news recently, the, the passing away of our dear Pastor Jason. And uh, it's really been very difficult for, for us, actually for the whole church, and even for the family of Pastor Jason. It's really heartbreaking. And I would just like to ask you, brothers and sisters, to, to spend time in prayer for the family of Pastor Jason, Sister Ice, the children, Ethan, Joash, and David. If you could include them daily in your prayers, pray for your strength, pray for provisions, pray for comfort in this time of difficulty in their lives. And also, brothers and sisters, if you have prayer requests, if you're suffering from any kind of disease, trouble, difficulty in your life right now, if you're having financial problems, please do let us know. You can message us anytime in, in our Facebook page or uh, you can message your pastors, your, your elders, and let us know what is happening with you and we will pray for, pray for you. You know, it has been a very difficult um, days recently. Because of this pandemic, we have lost a lot of loved ones. It's not just the recent passing away of Pastor Jason, but there are a lot more in our church also who have been affected by this pandemic, by COVID. And we really need to come together in prayer, united in Christ, united as we uh, stand in our faith and also pray for one another. We really need to hold on to our faith in Christ in this difficult time. Brothers and sisters, before we begin, may I just invite you all to come before the Lord and pray with me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We honor you, Lord God. We praise your holy name. Father, you are good always. You are our great and almighty heavenly Father. You know what is going on in the whole earth. You know, Lord God, what is going on in each one's heart. The troubles that are in our minds, in our hearts. You know them, Father. And we just come before you right now, Lord. Asking for your guidance. Asking, Lord, for your direction. Asking, Lord God, that you strengthen each one, Lord. That you... Just embrace each one who is suffering right now. We know that you are a God of comfort. We know that you are a God who heals. We know that you are a God who provides. We know that you are always looking upon your people. And Lord, we thank you. Because your presence is always with us. Father, I pray right now for those who are in deep trouble, regardless if it's sickness, Lord God, difficulty in their lives, uh, finding a job to provide for their families, Lord, probably suffering from financial trouble because of this pandemic, probably suffering from a bad relationship because of several bad situations that has happened in their lives. Lord, I just pray we just come before you and ask, Lord God, that you minister to each one's needs, Lord. That you minister in a very special way to your people right now. We trust and believe in your ways. And we hold on, Lord God, to our faith in you. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, thank you. Father, as we gather and worship you today, we ask that your Holy Spirit just be with each one of us, allowing us to experience joy of your presence. Lord, thank you. We just want to commit this time to you as we study your word, as we worship you, as we glorify your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, everybody say, Amen and Amen. Brothers and sisters, 
I'm sure that you've heard a lot of times in, in, in the situations where you are suffering from so many things, when you are in deep trouble in your life. I, I, I'm sure you have heard this phrase, suffering is part of this world. Probably your friends have told you, uh, pare or kapatid, ganun talaga. This is part of life. Ganun talaga ang buhay. Kasama yan sa buhay. Yung problema, yung paghihirap, suffering, so much pain, that is part of life. And they encourage us. Our friends, our relatives probably encourage us in this way. Kaya mo yan. You can do it. Lilipas din yan. All of these things that you are uh, suffering from right now, it will all come to pass. And yet, another heartbreaking situation comes in. There's another difficulty that, that you face once again. And probably the, the question in everybody, everyone's mind, especially those who are affected by it, by this suffering, Lord, why is so much suffering present in this world? Lord, bakit ang daming paghihirap at sakripisyo at kasakitan sa mundong ito? And probably you're asking, when will this end, Lord? Kailan ito tumatatapos? Brothers and sisters, I would just like to read to you Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 28. And if you have your Bibles, bring them out and let's read the Word of God together. And also in reverence to the reading of the Word of the Lord, may I just ask each one to just pause from anything that you are doing Get your Bibles and read together with me. I'll be reading from the NIV, Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 28. I consider that our present suffering are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The glory that uh, for the creation, I'm sorry, for the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration not by its own choice, but by the will of those of, of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless, word, wordless groan. And He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for Your Word. We thank You, Lord, for sending Your message to us today. Lord, we pray that You prepare each one to receive, anoint each one of us, Lord God, that we may be able to understand Your message for us today. And we pray, Lord, that you alone be glorified in this study of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Suffering. Pain and suffering. You know that this pain and suffering was not part of God's design. 
all creation, all humanity. Pain and suffering was not part of it. Pain and suffering only came because of man's disobedience to God. In Romans 5, Paul says, Sin entered the earth through one man, through one man, and death came through sin, came through that sin. And because of this, death now came to all people. Through Adam, all now have sinned. The, the, the effects of that disobedience is so much pain and suffering. From the time when Adam disobeyed God, there has been a very loud groaning of all creation. The first is creation groans in pain. This is found in verse 20 to 22 in chapter 8 of Romans. Creation groans in pain. The whole creation itself, it says here, was subjected to frustration, but not by its own choice. When you say creation, this is the land, sea, the air, um, the plants, trees, animals, and organisms even, and everything else. When Adam sinned, you know what happened? The ground was cursed by God. You can see that in Genesis 3. You know, apparently, before, the food, fruits, um, crops, vegetables, you can readily pick them up. You can eat them. It's, it's not hard to eat at that time or not hard to feed yourself. But you know what happened? God cursed the ground. And the ground now produced thorns and thistles. May tinik na. May hirapan ka nang punin. In Genesis, Genesis 3, 17 to 19, it says here, and this is God's, um, the consequence of man's sin is this. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it, from the ground. Through painful toil. By the sweat of your bro, you will eat your food. Paghihirapan mo na ngayon. You will now work hard for it before you can feed yourself. Creation has been subjected to decay. It says here in verse 20 that all creation waits eagerly for the time when it will be redeemed or it will be um, freed from the bondage of decay. I assume, I assume at that time, if there was no decay at that time, that when you pick a fruit or probably not pick a fruit, if you go back and get that fruit the next year, it would still be there, fresh, unblemished, not rotting. So tasty. Nothing was going to rot. I could just imagine that. But now, everything has its lifespan. Everything has an expiration date. Our food, if you don't eat it for a certain amount of time or period of time, Panis na. It's going to rot. And creation groans as the pain of childbirth. As in the pain of childbirth. If you are a mother, you would probably understand this. It says right up to this time it groans. I believe even that nature continues to groan even more harder these days. You know, there are stronger storms if you notice. There's um, much more heavier flooding compared to before. Earthquake, earthquakes are much more stronger. There are tsunamis everywhere. The recurrence of volcanoes erupting has been more frequent. You remember last year, Taal volcano erupted and it erupted again this year. 
Sicknesses and diseases arise from diverse sources. We've probably heard, we don't know if it's true, but uh, apparently COVID came from a bat. Kahit saan saan na lang nagagaling ng sakit. The earth is suffering from so much pollution. And creation became ineffective of God's intended purpose for it. It is because of man's disobedience. And it groans so very hard. Creation groans so hard. If only we can hear it. The second that suffered from this sin is humanity. Humanity groans in pain. In verse 23, it says there that humanity, that even the first fruits groan in inwardly in pain. When Adam sinned, you know, humanity lost so much. We lost our direct communication with God through the Holy Spirit. Guilt and shame came into man's consciousness. Remember when Adam and Eve sinned, immediately they felt shame. Guilt and shame came into their minds. Where did it come from? They realized that they were naked. It came because of sin. And instead of having eternal life, humanity or human life had an expiration date also. Physical death became present before it was eternal life. Human nature became corrupted. Our minds and our hearts are almost filled with unrighteousness all the time. Filled with malice. Sin now dominates humanity's life. In Romans 3, chapter 9 to 10, it says, Jews and Gentile, uh, Gentile alike are all under the power of sin. There is no one righteous, not even one. You know, sicknesses and diseases came into the world. COVID. So much have been affected by this virus. SARS, cancer, even high blood pressure, and many, many more. Generation after generation, new viruses and sicknesses arise, striking and attacking humanity. And you know what? Medical science is trying its very hard to cope up. If a new virus comes, science just tries its very best to kill that virus. Humanity groans in pain so much, in so much suffering, and it is all because of sin. Verse 23, it says, Those who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption to sonship. Those who are in Christ, those who have been, uh, those who have been deposited with the Holy Spirit when you receive Jesus Christ in your life. We also groan so hard. Even though we are already saved, we groan and we cry in pain. Why is that? Because even though we have the kingdom of God already present in our lives, we are already born again, meaning we are already renewed, already have, in fact, a, a resurrected life, born again ka na. You have now new lives in Christ. The old is gone. The new has come. But we are still subjected to physical death. We are still subjected to sicknesses. As long as you are here on earth, you are still subjected to pain and decay. We have been freed from sin already. As followers of Christ, you have been freed from sin. But... You still struggle with sin. 
We fight it daily. In our minds, in our hearts, in our actions. We fight sin daily. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. And much more, brothers and sisters. Those who live in Christ, I believe, suffer even more. When we faithfully preach Christ, what happens? Do you notice that only a few listen? Do you notice that among those who listen, only few accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? Some of those who listen turn away. And you know what? Numerous, countless of, countless of people reject the message of the gospel. Not only that they reject Christ, they also reject the messenger. Christ said that to us, told us that very thing. Remember, when they reject you, they rejected me first. And that is why we are rejected. You know, Paul expresses his experience like this. I would like you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 4 to 10. Sorry. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 9, 11 to 13. 9 and 11 to 13. I'll be reading again from the NIV. For it seems to me that God has put us, apostles, on display at the end of the procession, like those condemned to die in the arena. You remember uh, the Roman Empire where they drag along those who are going to be put to death, those gladiators, those fighters, those who are to be put to death in the arena. Paul is saying that we are like those people. We have been made a spectacle to the whole universe, to angels, as well as to human beings. Verse 11, To this very hour, we go hungry and thirsty, we are in rags, we are brutally treated, we are homeless. We work hard with our own hands. When we are cursed, we bless. When we are persecuted, we endure it. When we are slandered, we answer kindly. We have become the scum of the earth, the garbage of the world, right up to this moment. Wow, that is how Paul feels. The garbage of this world. He follows Christ as a servant, a bond servant, and the whole world rejects them, treats them as garbage. God has made them, in fact, a spectacle for everyone, everyone to see. That is more difficult. So much pain and suffering of being a servant of God. But Paul also talks about living. Paul also talks about rejoicing. Paul talks about Having everything. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 4 to 10, it, he says there, despite the troubles, the sleepless nights, despite that they are dying, they live on. Despite that they are beaten, they are not killed. They are sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Poor, yet they're making so many rich by giving them the gospel. He says, having nothing, yet possessing everything. Praise God. That is how a servant of the Lord feels. Having nothing, pain and suffering, yet rejoicing and knowing that you possess everything in Christ. Hallelujah. We can surely rejoice in the midst of great suffering if we are in Christ. In Christ, we lack nothing. In fact, we have everything. And that is why Paul said this in our verse. 
chapter 8, verse 18 to 19, he says, I consider that our present suffering are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. This present suffering, what you're experiencing, brothers and sisters, this so much pain and hardship, it can never be compared to what is to come. The glory of God's kingdom that is to come. And we will enjoy it. We will see that glory. We will see God's glory and presence with us. We cannot even fathom what it would look like on that day. We only have glimpses, bits and pieces written in the Bible of what it would look like. But I believe no one in, in their most intelligent mind could imagine what it looks like. We will all be amazed. We will all be surprised. That is my belief. A time will come will all, when all will be restored. Restored back into the way God intended it to be. And this is our hope. This is our hope, brothers and sisters, that those who are in Christ will be fully restored in the wonderful presence and glory of the Father. In these verses, we see this full restoration also coming into place. In verse 18, he says, Children of God will be revealed. The children of God will be revealed in those times. A clear separation of those who are His, the children of God, and those who are not His. We are already sons and daughters of God, brothers and sisters, but the full manifestation of this will come in the end. And that would be glorious. We will just need to wait and see. In verse 19, it says, A new age will come. Creation will be liberated from its bondage to death and decay. Wala nang magrarat. Everything will again be fresh every time. A new heaven and a new earth will come. And in that time, I want to read Isaiah 11 verse 6 to 11. It says here, The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like ox. The lion won't eat fresh meat anymore. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. This will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the lord as the waters cover the sea praise god a time will come in that time there will be total peace no more chaos even animals will be at peace with one another no more death there will be no more pain and suffering in that new age. In verse 23, it says, new bodies will come. Our new bodies will come. You know, the full realization of our inheritance in Christ is the redemption of our bodies. These bodies that we have will, will rot. It's subjected to decay, to death. The new bodies, these glorified bodies, we will receive them from the Lord. And it will never rot, fade. It will last forever. No more death. No more decay. No more pain and suffering. Hallelujah. So I encourage you, brothers and sisters, to stand firm. There may be a lot of troubles right now. 
so many heartaches, so many, so many diseases. You've lost so many loved ones. Stand firm. Konting antay na lang. It says here in verse 28, We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him. So whatever happens, as long as you are in Christ, everything that the Lord allows you to, have, to, to experience, it is all good. Just submit it to Him. God works for the good of those who love Him. And if you cannot, if you cannot um, uh, handle it, if, you're, if the pain is so much, remember, just cry out. It says here, even the Holy Spirit groans for us. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. If we cannot do it anymore, we do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless, wordless groans. And He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance to the will of God. He knows the mind of the Spirit. The Spirit knows us. Even though we're babbling words, we're just crying the Spirit knows what we want, what we need. And God knows exactly what we want, what we need. Konting antay lang, brothers and sisters. Hold on. Life is too short just to waste away. There is an eternal life to look forward to. 100 years, even 200 years is not comparable to the eternal life with Christ, experiencing His glory, majesty, and honor. I would like to end with this verse. This is in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18. You've heard this many, many times. And this is a wonderful verse. Paul says here, Therefore, we do not lose heart, Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is see unseen is eternal. This is how we can wait patiently. We do not look at what is happening right now. Shut your eyes to what is happening, the, this pain and suffering, and look at what is eternal. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. This is a battle, brothers and sisters. This pain and suffering is part of that battle. A fight that we need to hold on up to the very end. Let me just close with what Pastor Jason said in one of his preachings. The day you lose sight of God is the day you lose your fight. So let's continue to stand firm in our hope and wait patiently, eagerly on that hope to come. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, we are thankful for your wonderful message of hope in times of extreme suffering, pain, and difficulty. Lord, thank you because we know that you are always with us. We can go through this pain and suffering because you are with us. And these are only momentary. These are only temporary what we look forward to, Lord, is the eternal life with you. The life that does not end. No more decay, no more pain, no more suffering. Father, thank you for this wonderful message of hope that helps us to be strong in our knees, strong in our faith, 
standing firm in our uh, faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, if there are those who do not know you yet and wants to just experience this love and grace and mercy that you have, this free gift of life and salvation, eternal life, Lord, I just pray that you speak to their hearts right now as they come before you. Lord, allow them, Lord, to just come before you and receive you in their hearts. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for each one's lives, precious lives, Lord God. And help us to just continually walk in faith and also to pray for one another. Lord, as we go our separate ways in this online gathering, we pray, Lord God, that you bless each one, that you help each one walk faithfully, and that you help each one, Lord God, speak your good news to many who are lost. As we have heard your message today, Lord God, and we are blessed by it, allow us to be a blessing to others as well. Lord, thank you. We glorify your holy name. To you only belongs all glory, honor, and praise. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and everybody say, Amen and Amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you for joining us today in our Sunday service. I hope that you will all stay safe and uh, just have a wonderful Sunday. God bless you and see you again soon. Bye-bye.